ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣೆ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಸಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ರ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವೈಲ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರುದೇವ್ಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯಜ್ಞ ದಿ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೈಸ್ ಟು ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಇಟ್ try to internalize this message what he presented in a very beautiful way so i would encourage all of you to keep questioning and as we go through this slide deck if you agree is well and good but if you don't agree if you have any questions follow ups please to save them so that we can discuss and grow through this topic reflect more on this topic our scriptures they give so many perspectives they have so many things mentioned but sometimes we have to ask ourselves why do we need all of this why do i need to be spiritual in the midst of whatever other things i'm doing right now life seems to be going okay why need this spiritual knowledge there is one nice quote by gurudev where he says what we meet in life is our destiny and how we meet it is our free will so it might be any situation that we are faced with either with our own physical health that could be one either with our mind that is another situation or people around us at school at work different situations will keep coming they will not ask it will just come and present itself it will not come before it arrives it will not ask before it arrives it will not ask before it goes away also so constantly these situations are coming and ir- inherently we all have this desire how can i face this situation such that i am not sorrowful or i don't get crushed under the power of situations whatever could be that situation this is having the strength to face it that particular vision is given by spiritual knowledge spiritual knowledge will not change situations for us because that is ordered by our past karmas whatever is supposed to come it will just come means let us say because of some karma i go to my i go to catch my flight in an airport and because of some past karma this i have to face flight delay so many flights are there every everything is on time only my flight is delayed now that karma sambandha is there i have to face it it will just happen it will just come what you will notice not everybody gets affected by situations in the same way you will find few people get so upset that how come my flight got delayed or it might be somebody who is trying to grapple with that situation and another person is very calm and composed in the same situation so what spiritual knowledge promises is not change in situation what it promises is change in our vision situation is called as srushti okay little bit sanskrit words it's good to know ha huh? situation is called as srushti my vision in that situation is called as drushti so vedanta will not change drushti it will change our drushti it will not change the outside world but it will make us so powerful that we can face anything in this world without breaking down this we see in the life of bhagwan ram somebody who is so powerful lord of the universe everything was good in his life 
almost about to be coronated as prince designate and right next day he gets the news that you are being exiled you are being exiled to the forest and in the entire episode right from the time he gets this news that you are going to be sent to the forest all the way until bharat ji going and meeting bhagwan rama and everything that happens later not even once bhagwan complains why did this happen to me in fact valmiki rishi asks him it looks like you are going through lot of difficulty he tells valmiki rishi this is a very famous chaupai tat bachan puni matu hita valmiki rishi everything that happened to me there was something good in it valmiki rishi asked, what was good in it he says my father and mother both of their words were protected tat bachan puni matu hita bhai bharat asarao ayodhya got a brother Ayodhya got a king like my brother Bharata, who is so good. Mo kahu darasa tumhara prabhu. Valmiki says, "What is good for you? You are telling good for Ayodhya. You are telling it is good for so many other people. What is good for you?" He says, "I got to meet you. If I was the king of Ayodhya, I would not come to the forest and get your darshan." Mo kahu darasa tumhara prabhu. Sabha mama punya prabhu. All of this is result of my good karma. My punya karma is fructifying as this. The point to note here is, srushti is same, situation is same, but what has changed is is drushti. He is looking at it from a totally different standpoint, because of which he is able to live his life with so much strength. This is what spirituality promises us. and time and again as we keep studying as we keep teaching bal vihar attending study groups we have to constantly look within and ask ourselves how am i growing spiritually see more or less our life is the same whatever challenges came today same will come tomorrow whatever came yesterday more or less it's the same day today but bhagwan says every day it's like a blank slate is the same situation see if you can respond it respond to it in a different way that ability to respond is the subject matter of spiritual knowledge this is the topic living in excellence or living excellence where we have to first analyze our own mind our own personality and look within how many layers we have if generally somebody asks us you know how many facets of personality are you familiar with we'll say i'm familiar with my body i'm familiar with my mind what vedanta says we have five layers to our personality the first layer is called as physical layer when you meet a person what first comes to mind is just their physical layer the physical personality called as annamaya the second layer is called as physiological layer physiological layer this is the pranamaya which represents the enthusiasm of a person dynamism in a person ability to be very enthusiastic that is called as pranamaya the physiological layer third layer is called as emotional layer emotional layer which is called as manomaya it consists of different values different thoughts that rise in our mind different emotions that keep rising in our mind fourth layer is called as intellectual layer vijnanamaya intellectual layer consists of the decisions that we make the convictions that we have in our life what is right what is wrong all of those convictions live in our intellect whether we are able to live up to it or not depends upon our mind how well my mind is tuned to my intellect that decides whether i can live up to my conviction but all the convictions they live in intellectual layer 
and the last one is called as anandamaya which is the bliss layer or it consists of our inherent tendencies where my mind will go naturally that is decided by anandamaya the tendential layer of my personality okay physical layer physiological layer emotional layer intellectual layer and tendential layer the reason we are discussing this is if i want to live my life in excellence i have to make sure each of this layer is well blossomed i cannot focus only on physical layer or just on something outside some outside object and hope that you know i'll have overall excellence overall development or overall peace in life every layer has to be very well blossomed that inner blossoming is what we call as living excellence if our mind intellect physical body physiological body everything is well tuned whatever work this person does will be excellent that is the perspective given to us by our scriptures all of you are with me until this point five layers simple names huh? so now we will see each layer how to fine tune it okay i am also looking at the time so i'll have to combine different layers we can look at each one individually also but let us look at physical layer and physiological layer together physical layer was just this body physiological layer was the enthusiasm inside us which keeps us going which keeps us inspired motivated there is one verse in bhagavad gita where bhagwan says the key to get discipline the key to maintain a healthy body and an enthusiastic enthusiastic lifestyle this is the key is moderation moderation in what all things he lists four things in which we have to be moderate those who have studied sixth chapter you'll be familiar with this verse shall we just chant it are you all comfortable with bhagavad gita verses let us try yukta hara viharasya i can repeat <laughs> maybe you can i'll unmute somebody and one of you can repeat after me samardhini can you repeat yukta hara viharasya yukta hara viharasya chacheshtasya karmasu chacheshta kar yukta cheshtasya yukta chetasya karmasu karmasu yukta swapna yukta swapna avabodhasya नवबोधस्य this is maintaining maintaining a regular routine with the type of food and the time of eating that is going to give us an enthusiastic body and it is going to take care of fine tuning the physical layer and physiological layer generally we are very mindful of this eh? so many of you know so many people are into not eating processed food right trying to eat as much as fresh food as possible all those things whatever we can take on for ourselves see bhagwan doesn't give specific guidance he says each one will have to decide what is moderation in food so i will have to think what is my lifestyle what suits my body according to that choosing a diet but preferably having the same time of eating second he says is exercise you know whenever things are very 
busy the thing that gets skipped from our routine is this activity moderation in diet second one is having some exercise throughout the day where we can physically work out with this body third one he says not getting too engaged in something that we don't balance our priorities so in activity i should have moderation even if i like doing something but if i overdo it i will end up compromising on some other thing third one is activity and the last one he says is sleep so here also the duration of sleep and the time of sleep for little children they are so particular about bedtime have you seen it like if you schedule a meeting at 7:30 those who have younger children they say no this is this time we are not available because this is my child's bedtime but as we grow older we become very lenient about bedtime but in sixth chapter bhagwan says if somebody wants good health somebody wants an enthusiastic personality we need moderation in all these four things what we eat how we exercise what activities we do and fourth one is how are we maintaining our sleep hygiene sleep schedule how are we maintaining it that will decide how our day turns out to be we can discuss each one in more details but i am just giving a glimpse of it okay there are more layers to fine tune right so the, this one is only related to physical and physiological next layer is our emotional layer and intellectual layer emotional layer is seat of all emotions and thoughts intellectual layer is our ability to decide and guide this mind that is intellectual layer so as far as mind is concerned there is another nice verse in bhagavad gita 6th chapter where bhagwan says we have to strive to befriend the mind we have to strive put forth effort to make this mind our friend if we don't make it our friend that same mind will become my enemy there is no in between option is it either it will be your friend or it will be your enemy and whenever i see this world i will see it only through the lens of my mind so whichever lens i am wearing through that lens i will see this world so if my mind is friendly mind has beautiful thoughts beautiful emotions when i see the world through that mind world looks beautiful you must have noticed whenever mind is disturbed the same situation which gave us joy yesterday does not give joy that day if your drive is very beautiful or your walk from dorm to university is a scenic walk the day our mind is agitated mind is disturbed that walk doesn't give joy that is the nature of this mind it decides how it sees the world if let's say we are inspired by something or we just had some you know emotion very beautiful emotion somebody let's say surprised you on your birthday you felt very nice then you go out with that cheerful mind world looks cheerful and if mind is unhappy mind is turbulent world also looks turbulent so there is one nice definition i had heard from one mahatma ji he said what is a friendly mind how will you define a friendly mind they were masters in giving simple definitions he said whatever i am supposed to do it it does it effortlessly who is a what is a friendly mind friendly mind is that which does things which i am supposed to do effortlessly and whatever i am not supposed to do it does not even bring it up whatever i am not supposed to do it does not even bring it up such kind of a mind is called an obedient mind or a friendly mind 
think about this definition huh? if i am having something due something to present this mind is able to work on it effortlessly and whatever i am not supposed to do wherever this mind might get distracted it does not even bring those proposals such kind of a mind is called as a friendly mind so bhagwan says we have to work towards creating that because this mind is the tool we will be using for living our life we don't live our life from physical layer standpoint it's a very immediate layer the main instrument with which we are facing this world is not the body it is our mind so that mind which is beautiful that mind which is friendly it transforms the way it sees things same situation will look very different for different people at one situation which looks as difficulty for one person another person looks at it as an opportunity wherever things are difficult let us say let's say somebody is a leader in some organization and his team is not doing well that situation might break down a person he says i did whatever i could to get this team together make it work but it is not working out what another person who looks at it differently might feel this is where my leadership is getting tested same situation two people look at it based on their mind now how do i build this beautiful mind what do i do such that my mind becomes beautiful there is one nature of our mind we have to appreciate just like when you pour you know some molten material in a cast it takes form of that cast right in that way our mind takes shape or form of the objects we present to that mind mind and object are not two different things we might feel object is outside mind is inside but if you just analyze your mind we will realize every thought has an object there is no objectless thought every thought has an object according to the object is the texture nature of my mind if let us say i give movie hmm, as a object for my mind my mind will take form of that movie if movie is horror movie mind will become fearful movie is comedy mind will feel humorous movie is tragedy mind will feel sad so that object is deciding what texture my mind will be if we give social media whatever things we give this mind in social media mind will take form of that particular object just like this molten cast molten material being poured into that cast this mind is taking shape of different different objects now instead of giving these objects like movie and social media and so on we can give some calming and soothing objects so music is one example if you give something which is more soothing and calming this mind becomes soothing and calming so throughout our day i should look at my mind keep observing it and see what all objects it is taking up if all of my objects that i am presenting to this mind are agitating i should not be surprised if my mind gets agitated nature of the object decides texture of my of my mind this image up here is an assembly line have you all seen that assembly line whenever they are assembling bottles or caps constantly one thing is taken out another thing is kept another thing is taken out third thing is kept like that our mind is picking and dropping things continuously there is no gap in between picks up one object keeps that object takes up another object keeps that object 
So in all the objects that I'm presenting to this mind, I have to make sure that some objects are soothing and calming. Now I'll have to decide for myself, huh? what is my soothing object? What is my calming object? Some people might say it's music. Some people might say it's art. But you know, we are studying spirituality. So there should be one soothing object which is much more powerful, much more absorbing. And that object is our Bhagwan. If you remember Bhagwan, all these things will come naturally. If I am able to turn my attention to the Lord, He says that mind which is so agitated will start mellowing down. So quality of thoughts, quantity of thoughts and direction of thoughts. All of them will change whenever we start giving this mind some sattvic object. Sattvic object means more soothing object. So the question I have to ask myself is, what is my sattvic vishaya? What is my sattvic object that I give to this mind? So if we have our Ishta Devata, if we have a God whom we connect with, that Bhagwan will become our anchor. This is the devotional path to calm down the mind, to have a beautiful mind. Whatever little prayer we do every day, that will be our way to connect with Bhagwan. And we don't have to say a lot of Sanskrit prayers or very complicated prayers. Our main prayer should be Tanme Manaha Shiva Sankalpa Mastu. That Bhagwan, throughout the day, I'm going to face so many situations. In each and every situation, may my mind have auspicious thoughts. That is the main prayer, Tanme Manaha Shiva Sankalpa Mastu. Now, to turn attention to this mind, turn attention of this mind to Bhagwan, the best way is to take his name. There is some inherent power, there is some inherent charm in the name of the Lord. I'll give one short activity just to demonstrate or just to reflect upon how this name plays such an important role. Everybody ready for this activity? Very simple, huh? You just have to be honest and tell me what you thought. You don't have to do anything. If I tell you, don't think about Taco Bell. Don't th think about Taco Bell. Just close your eyes and see what comes to your mind. Listen to this statement. Eh? Don't think about Taco Bell. How many of you thought about Taco Bell? Some thought came. Good. That is very natural. Huh? Because what a name does is, out of several thoughts that we have, that name will pull out one particular thought. That is the power of the name. So you are not thinking about Taco Bell before I said it. Right? Hopefully not. Huh? You are listening to me, whatever I was telling. But the moment you say that word, out of thousands of thoughts, hundreds of thoughts which might be there within, that name will pull out a particular object. So object and name, they go together. If I apply the same philosophy, same method, that name separates out a thing from several other things, I can use it even for taking Bhagwan's name. So I might have several thoughts which are there, which are bothering. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are agitating. But the moment you say Krishna, moment you say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, what it does is, out of those hundreds of thoughts, it will take that one thought and bring Bhagwan in front of me. And then what do I do? Keep repeating it. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is that repetition is what we call as Japa. And what is the power of Japa? That it will make my mind single-pointed. 
it will make my mind focused and with that focused mind i have a very unique instrument i can use it for whatever activity i want whatever work i want that is the greatness of doing this japa and the advantage is we are getting grace of god also i had presented this in one high school session and one boy asked me you can do japa of any object at end of the day what do you want you want single pointed thought so can i meditate upon chair 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 if i keep taking chair name will that be also called as japa you know you can do it that way many people meditate upon flame candle flame in buddhism this is one technique where you just keep looking at that flame to make your mind single pointed but that flame doesn't have the power to bless us chair doesn't have the power to shower grace on us but if you take bhagwan's name that name is going to bring bhagwan in front and bhagwan will shower his grace and blessings that is the beauty of nama japa now gurudev he gives some very practical pointers he says how to live in excellence simple quote he had mentioned in one place was keep your mind where your hands are keep your mind where your hands are at work it is a very simple technique to make sure that this single pointed mind is actually being used now in effective work he says generally what we notice is my mind is 10 miles away from me it is either thinking about something in the future thinking about something far away or something in the past so he said sir do you notice if my mind is 10 miles away from me currently what this body is left with is a mindless body it is doing some work but that mind is somewhere else so his simple sadhana was let this mind be wherever my hands are not worrying about the future not getting caught up in the past i'll conclude with this metaphor this is a very nice metaphor to summarize several things in our spiritual journey this metaphor is of a chariot metaphor is of a chariot where there are horses in the chariot the reins of the chariot that is the second thing the reins which connect the horses and then you have the charioteer who is holding the reins and finally there is one person who is the owner of the chariot so this horses represent our sense organs which keeps running towards different sense objects but my chariot can be controlled by my horses or i can decide where my chariot should go so the reins which are there those reins represent the mind and the charioteer who is there that is our intellect buddhi sometimes this reins they go with horses wherever horses want there they pull this reins and sometimes these reins they go with charioteer wherever intellect wants there this mind will go so our prayer should be bhagwan may my mind be under the control of my intellect the practice that this person does is to make sure that his mind is controlled by his intellect not by his sense organs so wherever this mind is running out i have to first appreciate the consequences of going in that direction wherever mind takes me there wherever mind takes me to takes his sense organs to i have to appreciate last time when it took me there what were the consequences what impact did it leave on my mind did it make me more enthusiastic or did it drain me out was i more competent towards my goal 
or did i feel more drained out towards my goal when we keep thinking in this way several places where mind goes and runs those places this mind will not be tempted to go my favorite example for this is allergies when people get some allergy or they are they come to know that they have some nut allergy or you know some other food item even though they might love they might love that particular food item still mind will not go there because it has understood what is the consequence of having that item so here also i have to sit down and analyze throughout my day where am i where is my time getting drained out what are those activities where my mind is going where it did not go and those activities those objects i will have to pull back my mind that mind which is integrated with the intellect that mind which is connected with the intellect is a very very powerful tool you give it any project you give it any task it accomplishes effortlessly this particular topic we have discussed for hour and half but i tried to summarize it with only two layers or four layers in a very brief summary but i thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to reflect as i said it is not you know just some kind of discourse or talk it's something which we try to understand collectively okay so i will pause here and if you have any follow up if you have any things based on what i said or just in general we'll try to reflect it reflect on it together okay hari om everyone if you all can turn your videos on that would be good at least it will be that i've seen all of you once even if you didn't get a chance to talk good you can type your question in the chat if you want it to be anonymous or if you are comfortable asking it this is a very safe group this is you know something that uh, we can all share with each other you can raise your hand or just unmute and ask yeah uh please feel free to kind of unmute yourself um and go ahead with your questions and uh thank you soham ji uh for the talk uh this is great uh the floor is open for any questions please go ahead hey rob go for it hello soham ji Uh, also, handle the mind energy system. I think that is Sakshi Bhava. We are having strong energy. Hiram, where are you? Can you repeat or check your mic? Can you hear me? Uh, we can. Uh, but it's still uh, your voice is cracking a bit. Um, if you can type it in the chat, that would be great. Uh. Oh. and i can ask it on your behalf and in the meantime if anybody else has a question please go ahead so hiram's question is uh, somji how to handle the mind when it is disturbed how to practice sakshi bhava uh, when emotions are strong right that's a good question on one hand vedanta says maintain this witnesshood sakshi bhava but on the other hand it looks very difficult when this mind is turbulent when this mind is agitated the real answer is we can maintain sakshi bhava only of a calm mind we can maintain sakshi bhava only of a beautiful mind so first my effort has to be to create that beautiful mind just think of it huh? don't think of it in a theoretical way but practically look at our own experience when mind is agitated angry having some strong desire can we bring this thought that i am witness of this mind it's almost impossible mind will just take away so more effort is in developing a beautiful mind first 
that mind which has non bothering thoughts that mind which is devoted to the lord that mind which has beautiful thoughts you know thoughts of compassion thoughts of helping others thought of thinking good about others whatever values we can think about all of that will fall under beautiful mind that mind i can be detached because it's very well running my transactional life i don't have to get worried about managing that mind so sakshi bhava is an advanced state somebody who is a great mahatma maybe they can be witness of their anger because that anger did not rise because of their limitation anger was a conscious emotion that they arose in themselves i had read one anecdote of one swami ji he was a very senior swami ji and used to get very angry he would scold brahmacharis he would scold people in the ashram very disciplined and one day one of his student was cleaning his room and he was cleaning his table one diary falls down diary falls down and he wonders uh, what di- which diary it is go to see his name was written there on that diary small diary he says why is my teacher why is my teacher written my name there so curiously he just looks at that and that diary had a to do list and one of them was scold sukhdev tomorrow his name was sukhdev so his teacher has written in his to do list tomorrow i have to scold him and this this boy later on when he became a swami he is writing in his memoirs that day i understood how a jeevan mukta lives a realized person for him anger is a play for us as sadhakas we get angry because we have strong insistence strong opinion strong attachment for somebody for whom anger is a play he can become a witness of angry thought just like you are playing a skit or a drama and you have the role where you have to get angry so even though you are getting angry really you are not angry right in that anger you are trying to show different emotions so jnani or a realized master lives life in that way but for us we should not take their example first i have to work on my anger i have to work on my bothering thoughts relatively if mind becomes beautiful to that extent i can be detached from that mind to that extent i can say i am the witness of the mind okay good good question Ah, uh, anyone else before I jump in? Simi, please go ahead. Hi, um, um, so Amji, it was mentioned that the mind takes the form of whatever it's thinking about, um, and so we should try to think about sattvic things like Bhagwan all the time. But sometimes we have to think about. um like difficulties or sadness in life so is it possible to deal with those things without having the mind be affected and if so how that is true you know for example if there is some physical pain let us say right that is one example of life presents us with situations but even there we will realize the one who has strength of god one who has strength of devotion that person can handle this difficulty or physical pain in a much more mature way and that is where we will realize the limitations of other objects to relieve us of pain right devotion to god or holding on to bhagwan will be something so deep so subtle that that thought itself gives lot of solace so devotee the way he looks upon is if god wants me to go through this pain this is i'm okay with pain also if bhagwan is 
if this is how bhagwan wants me to be my well wisher who is my ishta devata my bhagwan and for some reason he has given me this experience there is something that he is teaching me through it and it's only matter of time no experience has stayed forever right we should just analyze our life also huh? whatever good experiences were there they did not stay whatever difficult times were there they also have not stayed things have moved on so gurudev has a beautiful quote even this will pass away but to hold on to it and appreciate it i need bhagwan in my life who can be my support you know we should start feeling helpless in life it's a very good emotion to have don't take it literally ha huh? start feeling helpless means i should feel on my own strength there are so many things in life i cannot handle and this we need not declare to the world this will become our thread this will become our inspiration to seek bhagwan's help gurudev says god is a decent fellow he never interferes in our life unless we ask him to interfere he mentions this in one place that he doesn't want to interfere in our life unnecessarily what whoever says bhagwan i am doing my best but i am unable to solve this problem either it is with help either it is with friends relations family in all those things the day we become helpless then bhagwan says let me do it you look at all devotees until draupadi felt arjuna will help me yudhishthira will help me bhishma will say something bhagwan said okay i will stay there but the moment she raised both her hands and said bhagwan you have to save me nobody else can then it was not too long before he came and helped how he helps that is up to him either he will come through some person he will come as guidance he will some come as advice he will come as situation changing whatever it is that he will decide but that anchor should become my support because some situations are such you cannot just say i want to give another object now right some difficulties might be there some situations might be there it is not as simple as just giving another object oh, i was thinking about some food item now i am giving some other item for this mind to think it's not that simple mind will not leave it if it got stuck somewhere it will keep repeating it in psychology they call it as object fixation where this mind gets fixated upon some object in such a way that it cannot leave it so to bring myself out i have to seek support of bhagwan okay and all of us you know are devotees in some ways otherwise you would not be here if we have taken the time to attend satsang means we are devotees in some way we have to just increase it in a way that it helps us in our life increase that devotion increase that love for god such that it actually becomes a power to reckon with good any more questions Okay, I think uh, I have one last question for Soomji before we close out. Um, you might have answered it through the couple of questions that are asked, but can you expand on um, how do we kind of not get burnt out while trying to chase this excellence that we are trying to achieve? Hmm. Right, right. That word itself looks very. counterintuitive that 
you are chasing excellence and if you say this to somebody who is in corporate or you know fast paced life or even at university if you are chasing excellence means all the time you are on the run and on another side we say there is devotion there is acceptance there is faith in god so how do we balance both of these and how do we not get burnt out in chasing excellence we will realize even to be efficient at work we need a mind which is calm and quiet and that particular training for that mind we will not get it while we are busy or while we are engaged in work right many of these sports player right when they have the game the amount of pressure they are under hundreds of thousands of people watching every step is being judged now that is a great pressure but they are not learning how to handle pressure only at that stadium they have put forth lot of effort outside the stadium they have prepared themselves for that game and that helps them be more composed and accept that or go through that situation in a much more calmer way of course some learning happens in the situation also but we need lot of prep work that preparation time is our spiritual sadhana where we are working on our mind such that even when we are trying to be successful trying to chase excellence this mind doesn't get burnt out that is the those are the two sides of our journey the spiritual side is our rehearsal time those of you who are into dance or music the arangetram that you see that is not the only performance or the only practice right there has been six six or more months how many months maybe a year also right year long practice that has gone for that 3 hour performance so like that my spiritual sadhana is my practice time where i am calming down this mind such that whenever it does things it doesn't get burnt out by situations around okay good okay thank you so much um uh, somji if you want to end the class with a closing prayer yes we'll conclude nice seeing all of you if you are in the bay area please do stop by at our san jose ashram but otherwise also please stay in touch om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम हरि ओम थैंक यू एवरीवन हरि ओम अम लुक फॉरवर्ड टू सम मोर अनाउंसमेंट्स कमिंग अप देयर इज सपोजेडली अ गेम नाइट कमिंग इन मिड ऑफ मार्च व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी इंटरेस्टिंग समथिंग फर्स्ट टाइम दैट आई विल बी अटेंडिंग एन ऑनलाइन गेम नाइट सो आई एम क्यूरियस टू सी हाउ इट गोस बट इट डेफिनेटली विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग वुड बी कंडक्टेड बाय हरि जी अम फ्रॉम डैलास हु गेव द लेक्चर लास्ट क्लास um and also look forward to other notifications that come through the whatsapp community i'm guessing most of you all are part of the whatsapp community if not um write to me in the same email id that you got this invite from and uh, i'll add you to the group recordings a lot of people have asked for recordings of the uh, talks they will soon be coming out on youtube um and once they come out i'll obviously post the links on the whatsapp community as well so give me time maybe till to like and you will get an update on the same Thank you so much and see you next month. Good Hari Om. Hari Om. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Hari Om Hari Om everyone.